Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. We are continuing our history lesson this morning in Mentor. This is the kind of history lesson I enjoy. The hands-on, you're in a space, you're learning so much about our nation. Todd Arrington is joining us once again from the James A. Garfield National Historic Site. And now are you now you're downstairs, right? You're not upstairs in the library anymore. We moved you. Yes, that's absolutely right. We're now actually in the uh, on the first floor of the home, and this is the uh, the parlor of the house. Uh, this is what you might think of today as more like your family room, where the family would gather in the evening after dinner. They would uh, read in here. They would you sell a piano there in the corner. They would uh, they would listen to music. And uh, believe it or not, there was a time when families just sat around and talked to one another, and they would do that in here as well. I was just thinking the same thing, right? There was a time when that once happened. <laughs> and the stories those walls could tell probably in that room with it being the main gathering space. Yeah, absolutely. This is so you mentioned earlier that we have a first here and that we have the nation's first uh, uh, presidential library or birthplace of presidential libraries. We have another first at this site as well that is nationally significant, which is this is also the site of the nation's first ever front porch presidential campaign, which James yes. Garfield ran from this home and this property in 1880. And during that that front porch campaign, when he would go out onto the porch and actually speak to people that had gathered there, he oftentimes would bring people inside and sit in this parlor and talk to them. So. The family spent a lot of time in here, but we also have some very famous folks that spent time in here as well, uh, including uh, former President Ulysses S. Grant, uh, and then also in, uh, in during that 1880 campaign, the Fisk Jubilee Singers from Fisk University in Nashville, which is a historically black college, uh, came here and sang for, for, uh, for James Garfield and his family. Garfield, of course, this is Black History Month, so it's a great time to think about Garfield as, uh, as, as a, a very strong anti-slavery voice prior to the Civil War, a union officer during the the war and then a very strong advocate for for civil rights for formerly enslaved people after the war so when the Fisk Jubilee singers were here in September of 1880 uh, they sang for him and Garfield told them afterwards I would rather be with you and defeated than against you and victorious so an, a great uh, indication there of his feeling about civil rights well I I love that you bring that up because I think we were just talking John Yuska who works with me behind the cameras he was just saying you know this is it is so intriguing because this is a man who was president for a very very short period of time and yet so much is known about him and so much you know we honor him so much and when you hear stories like that you're reminded of why this man was so important Yes, absolutely. We like to say here, you know, that he was the greatest president we never had. There was so much potential for for uh, for James Garfield to be a, a strong president, a very effective president. He cared deeply about education. He cared deeply about fiscal issues, and, and obviously, he he cared a lot about civil rights. In fact, uh, he spoke uh, about a third of his inaugural address in 1881 was dedicated to civil rights. Uh, no other president until Lyndon Johnson uh, in the mid 1960s spent that much time talking. About about civil rights in an inaugural address. So uh, Garfield certainly is, uh, represents a, a real loss to the country when mm -hmm. he was assassinated just briefly in his presidency. Wow, and what a loss it was. Oh, okay, so briefly as we continue to take a stroll here, we're clearly in the dining room now. I wanna remind everyone <laughs> as we stroll through uh, that when you give the tours and what all they will see when you give the tours. Sure, yes, we're in the dining room now, and this is, of course, one of the, uh, the many rooms folks will see when they come visit us. Uh, we do guided tours of the Garfield home. Uh, we are currently open on winter hours, which are normally Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 5. We are actually closed today because of all the weather and all the hazardous road conditions out there. We will be open tomorrow. Uh, we do guided tours once an hour, and uh, right now, with all of the COVID restrictions still being in place, we do ask people to call us to make a, a reservation. But yes, we are open on winter hours. Uh, through April 30th, and then from May 1st to October 31st every year, uh, we're open on summer hours, which are 10 to 5 every single day, seven days a week. So uh, we hope people will come out and, and see what we have to offer here and see what's, uh, what's beautiful and unique about this site. It is beautiful. I have seen it in person. I absolutely loved it. Again, James, it was the, it, give me the um, website. I'm so sorry again, one more time that people can go to and they can get more information. Sure, our website is uh, uh, nps.gov, that's nps like National Park Service dot gov slash JAGA, J-A-G-A. -A. Uh, and then we also have a nonprofit partner, the James A. Garfield Alliance. And that's what uh, And they right are at J Garfield Alliance. Dot, uh, jgarfieldalliance.org. It's up right below you right now, so it was perfect timing there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Todd. <laughs> Appreciate you and uh, all you do there to keep us informed. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.